rest upon us. And Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you would continue, Lord God, to bring your peace, I pray. Lord, that every family member, every heart, Lord, would lean into you and not away from you, Lord God. Lord, I just pray this right now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we pray, Lord, for Stacy, Lord God. Lord, right now, Lord, as uh, Lord, she's had this bout in the, in the hospital. Lord, I pray that you would touch her, minister to her, and just be with her right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord God, for the, those that are not well, that are not here, that wanted to be here this morning. I pray that you would touch them. Raise them up, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, Lord, you be seen. You be heard. Hide me behind your cross in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Piercing the darkness. The only thing, as we've been talking about last week, we talked about the, uh, the city on the hill and about this light that is within us that is supposed to show and we're not supposed to hide, but that the whole world, that everyone around us would be able to see the light of Jesus Christ in us. We talked about how for us to not show the light of Jesus for, their, for light not to be showing, it is a scary thought to think that for us not to shine the light of Christ that is within us, it means that we have to become dark. We must become dark if the light is not shining. The light of Christ needs to shine in our hearts and our lives. And the only thing that can pierce the darkness is the light. And, it, and even in the atmosphere and where we're at and what we do and where we go, there is a illumination within the current atmosphere that we are in. The light sends darkness on the run. And that also means in your own heart, your own life, when the light of Christ shines on us, the darkness has to flee. And as we move a little bit further, we're going to be talking about this morning about be in the light. And we are going to be going back all the way to the Old Testament. And we're going to be looking at, because the light of Jesus just didn't start in the New Testament. But the light of Christ started in the, in the very beginning as we've seen the light and the glory of God that illuminated, uh, illuminated uh, the earth and everything around. When, when God says, let there be light three days even before the sun the moon and the stars were even created that there was a light that lit up everything and we know who this light is because in in uh in revelation it says that jesus is the light that lights up heaven jesus is the light and as we're looking in the Old Testament, we're going to look at what Paul talks about, this, this place where Moses goes into the presence of God. And when he goes into the presence of God, there is, uh, as he sees the glory as God passes by him, that there is uh, this glory that he captures even into his physical being to where his face begins to shine so brightly that people couldn't even look at him. And so as we're looking, the, the light uh, and darkness, these two things do not go together. So if you have light of God in your heart and in your life, darkness has no room to be there. Darkness can't be there with the light. Just like compliments and insults. Anybody ever have a compliment, but it's kind of an insult as well? Those two should not go together, right? I've heard these throughout ministry and throughout my life, um, and some of these uh, maybe you have heard as well, uh, but, oh, your clothes look very comfortable, and sometimes that means, wow, you didn't really dress up for the occasion, did you? That looks very nice, but I liked it better before. <laughs> Anybody ever get that insult and compliment at the same time? Or, you look good today. What about yesterday? I have heard people say this. This is not me, okay, so don't get mad at me. Um, I've heard this one, and this is a scary one, uh, or it's kind of a sad one. You look pretty for your size. That is not something that you should say. These are compliments that uh, insults do not go together. I really like how you don't care about what people think of you. Um, you look great for your age. 
Um, and I won't even go to the compliments and, <laughs> and criticisms I've heard over the year with my messages. All right? <laughs> Your message, oh, I won't go into it. I don't, I'm not going to go into it. But my point being, the Word of God is the Word of God from the very beginning to the end. It goes together. The light in the beginning is the same light that we see all throughout time, and that is the light of Christ, the light that does uh, and darkness. They do not work together. They cannot combine together. Light dispels darkness. And with this concept that we've talked about the, the last couple weeks, that there's something amazing and powerful happens when the light of Christ comes into our life. So my points this morning are going to be shining like the sun, removing the veil, and the goodness and the glory of God. In Exodus, chapters 33 through 34 is where I'm going to be talking about in this portion of Scripture this morning. We're going to start here and see because Paul references this scripture as we work our way. So hang on with me, all right? We're going to work our way from Exodus into uh, where Paul talks about this moment and this thing that happens in the Old Testament and this uh, instance. And he brings it to a point of how the glory of Christ in our own lives and and the glory and the light that shines in and through us. Moses, in this, in this chapters 33 through 34, asked God uh, to do three different things. Moses asks God in Exodus 33, 13, show me your way. And also within that 33, verse 13, now that one's not up there, but you can write these down if you want. He says, because I want to know you. So number one, he says, show me your way. And the reason why he wants him to show him his way is because he wants to know God. He wants to draw near to God. So he says, show me your way because I want to know you. Show me your way because I want to to know you. And then number three, within this, this, uh, in 33, Exodus 33, 17, he says, show me your glory. And I'm going to pick up there in Exodus 17 through 22. And it says, So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken. For you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, Please show me your glory. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. But he said, you cannot look. You cannot see my face. For no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, here is a place by me. And you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be while my glory passes by that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Now, I'm not going to go in as much, but the rock that we see in Christ Jesus, that, I mean, that's a nugget that we should grab a hold of right there, that, that what helped him and what sheltered him was that Moses was kept in the cleft of the rock. Now, that's not where I'm going to be going in my message this morning, but that is a good thing to know when God is speaking to Moses. Moses did not want to know about God. There are many people and many theologians and many ones that that have looked and they study and they look and they look and they look. They want to know about God. But there's something different right here with Moses. Moses says, I just don't want to know about you, God. I want to know you, God. I want to know who you are. I want to know your essence. I want to know your goodness. I want to know you personally, God. He wanted to know God personally. He not only wanted just to know God, but he wanted to also see God in his fullness and in his glory. 
But there's something that was here that, that God says, and he speaks unto Moses and, and says that you can see my hinder parts as I pass by, as I keep you in the cleft of the rock, but you shall not see my face because those that see my face sh- will die and not be able to live. But all of this started with a desire to know God and not just know about God, but to know him, to get as close as, to him as humanly possible. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want the mundane in my life. But I want to have the same type of heart as Moses had in saying, God, I just don't want to know about you. I just don't want to read about you. I just don't want to have this this loose connection where you are distant and you are far away. I just don't want that, God. I need and I want more. I want more. I want to know you, God. I want to know you personally, God. And here in the Old Testament, there was a separation between man and God because of, of sin that had entered into the world and because of sin there was a separation but Moses did not let him let that stop him from pursuing after knowing God personally and seeing him in his glory and just a sneak peek to the to right now is that there is no more veil or separation why is this important and how does this apply to being a light in this world It is important to see the steps that Moses took because these steps caused Moses to shine. In verses 33, 13, step number one, he asked God to show him his way. And God, what are you all about? Here, Moses and these steps that he took caused him to shine like the sun. Number two, he wants to know his way because he wanted to know God. This takes him deeper to a personal connection with God. Here is the open door for the attributes of God to be poured into the life of Moses because when Moses knows God, he can live in, live by, and be like the one that he serves. And I want to say that to you this morning. When we get to know God and we draw into God and into his presence, we can become like him. Not that we are him, but we begin to make that connection just like in the very beginning beginning of time of when God created man and stamped us with his image as we have been created in the image of God there is a reconnection and a reinstituting the things that were that were corrupted because of sin brought back into the way that it was supposed to be show me your glory he wants to see God's glory God's majesty his beauty his splendor and his goodness, the essence of who God is. Moses asked what no man had asked before, to see the glorious light of God's glory. You want to shine? You want to look at what Moses, you look at what Moses did and you do what Moses did. You ask, trade in your ways for his ways. Get as close to God as humanly possible. And through Jesus Christ, there is no limit. And through Jesus Christ, there is no barrier. We can draw in beyond the veil and go into the presence of God through Jesus Christ. Number two, the veil, Exodus 34, 29 through 35. It says, now it was so when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, this this is after he goes into the presence of God. He came down from Mount Sinai and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand. When he came down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone that they were afraid to come near to him. Here, the results of being in the presence of God and going into the presence of God, that there is this light that, that, that uh, begins to shine on Moses' face. Anybody ever have like something on your face and and everyone's looking at you kind of weird and maybe standing back. But here, this was the glory of God and all of them were looking at him and his face was shining so bright that it actually terrified the people that were looking at him. 
Can you imagine this? And Moses did not even realize the result of being in the presence of God. The result is getting to know God, but also there is a shining that comes forth in our own hearts and in our own lives. The result is shining like the sun. People like results. Bosses like results. People like to see the results of work. Put uh, something uh, together and when and you're building something, um, you like to see the result of the finished product. Anybody ever like to watch some of those restoration shows? You, you see the beginning and then you're like, you see the end and you're like, oh my goodness, I, I, can't, I can't stop watching because I, want, I know that there's going to be an amazing transformation that happens. People like the results. Anybody go on a diet and you like to see results? And some, sometimes this is what people, keeps people from staying on the diet is, well, I weighed myself before and I'm wanting to see results and I weigh more than I did before. And it could be the gallon of water you drink after exercise. We like to see results. But I want to tell you, the results as we draw near to God will make a difference in you and make a difference in your life. The result that was, uh, was shining, a reflection that Moses was a shining reflection of God. Moses comes from the presence of the Lord looking different. His face shone. It says that the people were afraid to approach him. But he didn't realize the light that was coming from him. But everyone around him did. Isaiah 55, 11, it says, Show, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me. They stood back. The thing, most amazing thing about this light we are talking about is the light of his glory that Moses couldn't, uh, they couldn't even look at, but could only see as he, they, he could only see the hinder pirates of God. But this was temporary. It talks about this temporary glory that was upon Moses' face eventually went away. It could not remain. It could not remain. But as we are moving into removing the veil and letting the goodness and the glory of Christ shine through us. Saturated with the light to where we become a reflection of the light that we forbear. There's something interesting uh, that that in in science that we see um, that is photoluminescence. Anyone ever hear of that before? Photoluminescence. Anybody ever have a glow stick before? Anybody uh, have see the glow or the, the stickers? You shine a little bit of light on them, and then they get really bright. Just raise your hand. Anybody else know what I'm talking about? All right. There we go. Almost everybody. Good. Um, but photoluminescence. This is, this is what, in nature, one of the uh, probably best examples that we could see to illustrate what is going on here. As you have a light, you take that light and you shine it on the, the item that has this, uh, th these reflective uh, atoms within it. And it absorbs the electronic energy of these things. And so when you shine a light on it, it becomes bright. But it's taking the light that was shined on it and reflecting that and it's containing it and it's holding on to it and here as when we get into the presence of God this light that shined uh, his glory upon our hearts and in our lives there is a reflection just like the moon is to the sun it is a reflection of the light of the sun of uh, of the sun upon the moon just like we are as a reflection from the son of God into our hearts and into our lives 
And I, I shared this probably not too long ago, but when Julie and I first got married, we were pretty young. I mean, Julie was, um, I met Julie when she was, ni- when she was 19. Um, I met her at camp, and Julie said that she was pretty much 20. Uh, and so, and then... Then we got to know each other a little bit more, but she uh, she was close. She was only a couple a uh, couple months off, uh, and I was I was 21, right? So I'm I'm just uh, barely older than her. Uh, but as I, when I met Julie, we we're pretty young. But she she liked all these glow glow stars. Anyone see those? And uh, um, she had them up all up in her room, and uh, and she brought that into the marriage with us. <laughs> <laughs> and she put these little, uh, sorry, Julie, I should have asked you before. I shared this before, so I'm sure it was fine. You didn't, uh, you didn't say no last time. So, uh, but she put up all these glow, glow stars up in the bedroom, and the sticky would wear off. And so uh, you're sleeping, and uh, we'd have falling stars uh, in the middle of the night. But as Christians, we reflect the light that is shined upon us. Now, going to the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 3, 7 through 18. I know I'm reading a lot of scripture this morning, but this all pertains to what we're talking about. This is how Paul ties all of this together. He says, but if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses. Because of the glory of his countenance. Here, Moses is talking about, right, what we had just talked about. He says, the glory of his countenance, which is the glory which was passing away. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? All right, here here we go. Now, look back at Moses, and I think when I read that, and when I first read that, I remember reading that when I was younger. This is amazing that he goes as close to God as he can, and he starts to shine so brightly for God with, uh, from being in the presence of God. But then Paul says here, how will the ministry of the Spirit be more glorious? We can cheer for that, right? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. turns to him if you have turned to the lord this morning you should be shining like the sun the son of god that's jesus christ and this light should be shining in a dark and dying world 
So what does this mean this morning? Turning the Lord means, the word here is, uh, is kurios, simply meaning supreme authority. Turning to the Lord means, just as we've seen with Moses did in Exodus, show me your ways, I want to know me, to, to know, know you, and I want to see your glory. Turning the Lord, the picture is turning to his face. Turning to his face. And there is no veil. There is no separation because of, because of Jesus Christ. For it is God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And what we could not do in Exodus, you cannot see my face and live. Where the Spirit of the Lord is today, there is freedom. Paul said, with unveiled face, beholding as a mirror, we are the reflection of Jesus Christ. But he says also, but if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, let the light of the glory of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. So this is a picture that God, that that. That Paul mentions that this, this, the gospel is veiled when it, it, it means that the light is veiled from them. We cannot cover up this light. For we do not preach of ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This morning, this is how we pierce the darkness. This is how we begin to pierce the darkness. It's not about how, how you feel Moses was shining and he didn't even know it. His shining wasn't based on how he felt, but that as a result of being in the presence of God and the goodness of God upon his heart and his life. And we talked about that they will see your good works and then glorify your Father in heaven. There is a releasing of the goodness of God and the glory of God. And I don't know about you, and I'm about to wrap this up here, but I don't know about you that you can go and you can go and you can go and you can do and you can do. But if you're not getting into the presence of God and you're not spending uh, time with Jesus Christ in his presence, just not knowing about God, but getting to know God personally. If you are not doing that, there, there is a there is like almost like a veil that is that you just feel covered that that the, the shining and the the knowing and the moving forward. I, when I go into the presence of God, I get new motivation to follow after Jesus wholeheartedly. I, there's something that happens inside of me. There's something that breaks inside of me. Sometimes I don't realize how much and how bad I need him until I put the time and, and get out and get out of the way and spend time in the presence of God. And I realize, God, why did I wait so long to get into your presence? And then all the questions and all the concerns and all the things that you were worried about and all, God, how am I going to do this? God, how am I going to do that? What am I going to do next? And you get into the presence of God and you simply say, God, I can't do this. God, I don't know how I'm going to do this. But all of a sudden there is a, 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 a affirmation of what God, affirmation of what God is going to do and how God is going to work and he leads you and he speaks to you and there's the return of joy and peace in your heart and in your life. Would you bow your heads with me please? Dear Holy Father, Lord, I thank you for your presence. I thank you, for Lord God. Lord, that the veil has been rent and the veil, Lord God, has been taken away. That, Lord Jesus, that we can meet with you, Lord God, face to face. Lord, in your presence, oh God. Lord, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the work that you've done. And sometimes I don't think that we realize, Lord Jesus. Lord, Lord, I know we don't realize, Lord, the fullness, oh God, of what you have done for us. But, Lord, I pray, Lord, right now in this moment that we would get a glimpse, Lord Jesus, of your work and what you have accomplished and what you've done for us, oh God. 
I pray, Lord Jesus, Lord that, Lord, that your light would shine through us. I pray, Lord God, that your light would shine, Lord God, upon, Lord, this lost and dying world. I pray that your goodness, Lord God, would be revealed and, Lord, come forth in our hearts and in our life. Lord, not of the good that we've done, but, Lord, the good that you, Lord, of who you are, O oh God, Lord, in us and through us. Lord, that your righteousness, Lord, that your, Lord, your holiness, O oh God, Lord Jesus, Lord, we, ha we couldn't do it. Lord, we can't do it. Lord, it's only through you and by you. And so, Lord, I pray, I pray right now, Lord Jesus. God, that you would meet with every heart and soul that is here this morning. Lord Jesus, where you are this morning, and I don't know where you are, I don't know where every heart and every life is, but the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you. And maybe there needs to be a freshness and a, and a return to the secret place and the place into the presence of God. And your desire has been for other things. And your heart's desire for being in the presence of God, just like as Moses had this desire to see God, to know God. And this morning, through the word and through the message, that you have heard the voice of the Holy Spirit saying, I want you to return to that place again. And maybe you have been, like I mentioned, maybe one that's just been going, going, and going. And you're running on fumes. But you need a, to once again, your heart and desire to be for getting to know Jesus and spending time with him. I'm not going to ask you to come up here this morning, but I want, you to I want you to respond to the word. If that's you this morning and you are, just, are, you, and you are saying, a yes, yes, I, Lord God, I commit, Lord Jesus, I commit my, my, my life, I commit my heart to you and to, to seeking after you wholeheartedly. I, I, have, I have backed off. I have tried to do things my way and, and I've been trying to just to go and to go. And Lord, I need you. I need you and I need your presence. And I need to move from where I'm at back, back, Lord God, into your presence. That's you. Would you just lay, lift up your hand this morning? Just lift it unto heaven. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I pray that you just fill every heart and every life with your spirit. Lord, there's no more separation. There's no more boundaries. There's no more, Lord God. Lord, you are, Lord, uh, uh, Lord, we as with unveiled faces, Lord Jesus. Lord, your glory, Lord God. I pray, Lord Jesus, for every heart that is here that is responding to you, Lord God. I pray, Lord, for a move of your spirit like never before. I pray for a refreshing, Lord God. Lord, a refreshing comes, Lord, from the presence of the Lord. And Lord, I pray that there would would be a, a, a refreshing in every heart and every life in you. Lord, I pray, God, that we would allow your light to shine through us, Lord God, in this world, that your goodness would be seen, and that hearts and lives, Lord God, would come to know you. Lord, we thank you. We give you glory, and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, all God's people said, amen. amen. Would you just give the Lord a mighty hand of praise? At this time, we're going to make uh, start the transition and getting ready for the, uh, the baptism. And so if you bear with us here just for a moment, we're going to be changing some stuff on the stage. And uh, during that time when I'm getting ready, uh, Julie's going to do a few announcements. Thank you. I just wanted to let you guys know, too, um, that I got word that um, Gabri Gabriella said that they're on their way home. So thank you for your prayers and support, but to continue to lift her up in prayer, but they're on their way home, so that she's out. 
so Stave C is doing a lot better. So thank you, Jesus. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So t um, a few announcements. Um, there is going to be in um, on December 11th. It's not in your bulletin, but on December 11th, we're just going to have a women's Bible study. That's a Monday night at 6 o'clock um, here. We're just going to finish up with the lesson that we left off in October. So come out, ladies, and join us on December uh, 11th at 6 o'clock. Um, and that will be great to have uh, all the ladies to get together. And then also... Um, on um, on November 26th, there will be communion. Uh, that will be on November 26th. And then the month of December, I've actually also had a few others. We um, It's in your bulletin on the 3rd that there will be another baptismal, but somebody also asked if we can baptize maybe on the 17th. So we're just going to say the month of December. If you want to get baptized, we can have it open all month of December. So just let us know. There is sign-up sheets. So um, what an exciting time that we're going to have in the month of December just to give thanks to the Lord, but also get to celebrate people are wanting to make that commitment um, in December. And then, um, then we will, on December um, 17th, we will ha also have our Christmas service at 11 a.m., and that's with our kids will be coming into service and being part of our service on December 17th. Um, and then the Catalyst, um, that is our, for our youth. Um, and if you have any youth or if you know any youth would like to go to this retreat, it's a fun activity for the uh, youth to get together and have time to each other and have time just to get away and be in the presence of the Lord. And then also not... It's kind of far away, but it saved the date for the women's co um, conference, and that's in the month of April um, through 11th and 13th. And he's still getting ready. So, um, but those are your announcements. And also, if you want to, on your back of your bulletin, or even if you're watching online, there is, um, you can click on the link there to our webpage. And it also has the bulletin, all of our announcements on the web page. You can scan this with your um, phone, and it will pull up all of our web page for you, too. And if you're new here, we would like to also, we do have a Connect card. And let us know um, who you are and everything. We will send you a gift um, if you're new. Um, and st so thank you for coming if you're new. And I think, nope, not yet. Where is he? I don't know. <laughs> he's still, I think he's still. Oh, and also, if you want to get baptized, there is a form, there is a special form that you would um, fill out and um, get hand back to us if you would like to get baptized. And that's on the back table, or let us know um, if that's um, the. Huh? So, um, yes, so if you guys, the ones who want to get baptized and stuff, um, is he ready? Nope, not yet. Um, baptize, there is this form, and then you can look and see, and it also will say why we get baptized. There's scriptures in here. There's also um, things that, um, and some of our kids are actually wanting to get baptized. They made that commitment. They're wanting to make that commitment. So even if it's you have a kid that would like to get baptized, that will um, they can get baptized too if what they talk to us and go through the process and the questions for why we get baptized. And um, just going to be one more minute. Sorry. Um. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm not a singer by myself. I could sing with my husband, but not by myself. Um, that is not, that is not me. But even, even by being up here, I guess, this is actually out of my comfort zone, but God stretches us so much. 
and he be overcomes, we can overcome anything with God. And so with that, we can even overcome being up here in front of everybody. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I, I think we're getting ready. do want to mention for the family, um, those that uh, uh, want to take pictures, um, you, you feel free to come. If, you, you got, if people want to move closer, you're able to do that as well. Um, but uh, yeah, we love to, yeah, if you want to get pictures, get as many pictures as you'd like. Um, and uh, yeah, stand on either corner, so be able to do that. Oh yeah, we'll, uh, we'll take some too, and we'll send them, if you guys want pictures, we'll send those to you. And also, this is being recorded. It's a little, it's a little warm, so hopefully it's not too warm for you. Remember what I said about warm. I need to bring that up just a little bit. All right. Father given his heart to the Lord. He's dedicated his heart to Christ. And this has been a little while coming. And, uh, and today is the day so grateful that, that you're here and uh, you believe in Jesus Christ. This is your Lord and Savior. I do. Say something. Yeah. Uh, I'm Brian, Bob's son. Just a proud moment for his son to be here with my dad. I know the Lord's working on him uh, spiritually and physically. So this is just a uh, answered prayer you know God is working in all of our lives and this is just a testimony of that so um, we just ask Lord that you just um, as my dad you just cleanse my dad's spirit Lord through this he cleanse his body Lord I thank you for bringing him closer to you Lord we give you all the praise and glory Lord that you're just changing my dad through these circumstances of life what the enemy meant to destroy my dad Lord you're turning into good and we thank you for that, Lord. So we just ask for complete restoration of his mind, his body, yes, and his Jesus. spirit, Lord, through the blood of Jesus, Lord, through, through this, this um, ceremony, Lord, of my dad in front of all these people, Lord. Uh, Ten years ago, if, if we said my dad was getting baptized, everybody would just laugh. So you're just working in my dad's life, and now we're going to laugh with joy and, and yes, thank, everybody, thank everybody for being here. In your sons, let me pray. Amen. 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 Lord, I, I do ask, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Lord, that everything, Lord Jesus, as, as we, Lord, uh, as he's baptized, Lord, remember that the old is gone. Lord, as you were buried, Lord, and rose again, Lord, as he goes down and, and comes back up, Lord God, the old life is gone and the new life is you and you is here. So, Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name for, Lord God, that you would touch him. I pray for supernatural strength in the, Lord, the baptism of your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Bob, would you go ahead and bring up your hand over your nose? Upon your confession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless him, Jesus. Bless him, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's just give the Lord another hand of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 God is so good. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Upon the confession of your faith, you are. You belong. You are Jesus. Jesus is Son, and you belong to Him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I am the son of Jesus now. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for your touch right now. We thank you for, Lord, you moving and you working, Lord God. Lord, we thank you that the old is gone. And, Lord, we have new life in you. And, Lord Jesus, this is a new life. This is a new beginning. And this is a new start. The old is gone. The new has come. And, Lord, we just give you all the praise in this joyous moment. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God is good.